Everyone here with Gadi Mazol, the CEO of Biocatch. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. And besides being a great founder, you're also an alumni of you know, Israel's 8200 intelligence team. And let's just start off telling me about what, you know, kind of tell me about the 8200, what it, what it, what it is and how it, beca um, how it led you to become a great entrepreneur. 8200 is, uh, is one of the largest units in the Army, uh, and the equivalent is probably just like uh, the US NSA. Mm -hmm. uh, but unlike the US NSA, it's not professional service of, of, uh, or professional work of, of the you know, uh, professionals working in that, uh, in that unit. It's, it's basically kids at the end of, at age of 18 mm -hmm. that get recruited, get tested, get all, through kind of all kind of screening uh, when they are 17, 18. They get to those units. They usually serve not the mandatory three years, mm -hmm. but five years. Okay. Uh, in very specific uh, unit within that large unit uh, and it became because of the training of that unit which is uh, the unique part of that is that it's training without indoctrination so it's like uh, they train them to tackle major tasks and major kind of uh, uh, projects without even knowing that that can succeed uh, and, and that's the type of training that I think then led many of the alumni to start their own companies and basically not be afraid of big challenges mm -hmm. after the unit. And after you left the service, what, what, what was your path to becoming a founder or CEO? So I left the service when I was just finishing my master's. Mm -hmm. uh, my uh, BA and master's were, were in mathematics and I was considering, uh, and I was actually going to Stanford and, and MIT and Harvard to mm -hmm. look at uh, where, where I want to do PhD. Uh, and then we, a friend of mine and, I, and mine, just thought about an issue that was uh, it would be actually nice to solve it, and we started the company. It was the early 90s. What, so, was, the, uh, what was the the first issue? Uh, the first issue was basically identify better uh, uh, text recognition on fax documents. Okay. You remember there were faxes? I do. They still they have them around <laughs> still sometimes. <laughs> Somewhere yeah, in the basement, yeah. So uh, and uh, and optical character recognition was a big uh, big industry back then, but it didn't work uh, well on faxes. So said it would be cool to solve that, and that kind of diverted uh, the PhD and kind of academy yeah. route towards uh, towards starting a company. Well, now tell me about the latest with with BioCatch. You go from fax machines, uh, you know, 20 years ago plus, into like cutting edge cybersecurity and mobile and you name it. Like, tell me about what you guys are doing and what's exciting. So. Uh, I actually know I, I'm, I'm not one of the founders of, our, of, uh, of uh, uh, BioCatch. I knew the founders. Oh, they okay. came to me when I was one of the founders. It gets complicated. I was one of the founders of, a, of an investment platform called Our Crowd. Okay, yeah. Our Crowd is a leading globally uh, uh, investment platform for accredited investors. Mm -hmm. uh, and we were a few founders, and I was one of them. And the founders of BioCatch knew me. So they came to me, I was a, a GP, a partner mm -hmm. at the fund, and we led the first investment round back okay. in 2014 into BioCatch. And then, uh, and I, I knew the founders from, be, uh, from before, from the unit also. So it's, you know, going back uh, the to community, the community. The unit, the 8200 keeps on, uh, it's, keeps uh, on paying off. Yeah, the, the, the gift that keeps, uh, yeah. keeps giving. Um, and, and then we, I f kept uh, in contact with the company. We actually put someone on the board on our behalf that then became the chairman. And at the 18, he, 2018, he mm -hmm. became the CEO. He asked me to join as the guy managing here, okay. and then I replaced him three and a half years ago. Gotcha. Okay. Cool. Uh, sorry, three and a half years later, so uh, nine months ago. I see. I replaced. And him. so, what do you? So there is so much cyber going on right now. There's so many threats. What? Tell me, what are you tackling right now? You know, you, right. you talked about A200. You learn about extreme focus. Focus on one thing and do it really well. What is? What is BioCatch focusing on right So now? we are in the field of security and cyber, but we're not a classical cyber. What we actually do is we look at the way uh, an end user interacts with, and primarily our customers are banks. I mean, the largest mm -hmm. banks in the world are customers. Uh, 25 of the top 100 banks mm -hmm. are customers. Uh, and we look at the way you interact as a user. You interact with your bank account, either through a mobile device or through the desktop, through mm -hmm. uh, uh, the website. And by the way w you move the mouse, by the way you type, uh, by the way you hold the device, the angle, etc., we create a behavioral profile uh, for you and that doesn't look at what you do, doesn't look at anything that you actually type, just the dynamics. Wow. And we can tell the bank whether the, the person on the other side of the screen 
is a genuine person that it's the, indeed it's Steve and the behavior is similar to your previous sessions or it's a fraudster that took over your account and we protect the whole life cycle of the customer so uh, account takeover is what I told uh, I just said and that's when we protect against someone stealing your credential or buying your credential but we even look at the way you interact when you submit a credit card application for Amex Amex is an investor and a customer of ours so you submit a credit card application we can still we have not seen you before you are an Amex Amex had not seen you before. Okay. Uh, we can still, by the way you interact, think about how you type your social security number. Mm -hmm. So if it's your own social security number, you'll type that continuously from long-term memory. If someone that stole your credential, ah. you would either paste that social security number or you will type that in a very chunky way. So those are the signals. We have thousands of those signals that we look at to basically give our customers, the banks, a way to protect their customers and that's it. Well, and you said the way that someone holds their phone and everything as well? Yeah. We all have our preference of uh, what hand and the angle and how much pressure we uh, we put when we click and do we swipe with both ha with both fingers. Mm -hmm. or So all this becomes your uh, behavioral profile. Well, you'll know it's me because every time I open my bank account, I swear. So they can tell, like, like if they're not cursing, then it's definitely... We're not doing voices. We're like not that. doing... Yeah. <laughs> and what is... Um, what are you looking like so as you look into the future and is it money is going as you know so mobile so digital banks are just basically giant databases these days mm -hmm. what do you what, what excites you what is like the next mission for for biogo for us the main mission is basically still protecting but if you think about the landscape of fraud as it evolves uh you look at the last few years fraudsters used to use tools so they would uh, remote access your desktop or they would use malware etc mm -hmm. the defenses that the industry put in place are kind of uh, are quite good in detecting those type of tools. Uh, it's relatively hard to do bot, bot attack, malware attack, etc. Mm. And basically Ford went back to attacking the end user, the weakest link. Mm. So you see more and more scams, more and more social engineering of uh, in the UK, the pandemic, pandemic year 2020, every month there was a new scam mm. MO kind of uh, People invented. People calling up pretending to be the bank Pretend, or give me your code, like you've been hacked, tell me your code, I'll the, help you. Yeah. yeah, in the UK for instance, if, uh, UK is always leading with the fraud because uh, typically they have the best defenses mm -hmm. and whenever you put a new defense, fraud finds kind of a, you know, a ways around that. Okay. So typically the innovation of fraud is tested in the UK. Uh, so in the UK in 2019 that became a pandemic uh, and usually the way it goes is someone would get a call, usually a vulnerable person, an uh, mm. older person, and would say, I'm calling from uh, Sky, the cable uh, network, mm. and you owe us eight pounds. Yeah. And they would uh, give their debit card, pay the eight pounds, and five minutes later, they'll get another call saying, we're calling from, say, Barclays, and uh, assuming that's, uh, they know who the bank account of yeah. that user is. So we're calling from Barclays, we just stopped the fraud transaction, okay? That was fraudulent, the eight pounds. Wow. Uh, but because you gave your debit card, and that debit card is connected to your bank account, we open a new account for you and let us guide you through transferring all your money to that account. And within 45, 50 minutes, they clear the whole life saving of, the whole, of that person. And if you think about the defenses on the bank side, it's the end user that does that, it's coming from his location, from his device, everything is normal in that session. We're still capable of, of uh, seeing that the behavior of the user in this session is different than the normal behavior, wow, uh, that someone is uh, dictating and telling them what to do. So that's a very sophisticated and cruel con, and smart actually, and it, it's all because of the and it's AI and just computers. It's, it's fascinating. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Awesome. I think it's a unique combination. Uh, the, the company between, on the one hand, it's a big business, it's a real business. We're going 50% a year. We're mm -hmm. very targeted on uh, on the largest financial institutions. Second is that the technology, as I say, it's all AI, all machine learning. I mean, deep algorithms. And the third is actually working on the good side of the good guys, just uh, actually protecting people from uh, losing their money. Cool. One more one more question. In terms of like the future of AI, what is what do you think is the most, what excites you the most, what is gonna be like the biggest game changing? It might not, not even be in your industry, but what is kind of the promise right now that's getting you excited? So I think that definitely in the last couple of years, deep uh, neural net is the main uh, kind of step function. So the uh, neural net? Neural net, okay. uh, deep neural net. That's uh, for the first time we have the, uh, uh, CPU cycles and the brain power on the computer side and the big data that can create. I mean, neural net is not a new concept. It started in the 80s, mm -hmm. but it was, uh, we, we didn't have back then the, uh, the enough of the resources and not enough of the data. So they are coming, uh, they're coming together. I think that uh, moving forward, it will be these type of algorithms 
but in conjunction algorithms that are looking also at features uh, because if you think about what we're doing it's not enough for us to tell the bank this is risky this mm -hmm. is not risky we need to tell him why we think this gotcha. way and neural networks are not giving good answers of why it's more of a black box and we need to tell them we think that uh, you should not accept this credit application because the user doesn't know the data that they type in so we need to give them that type of clarity of uh, otherwise it will be discrimination so uh, I think a combination of those of deep neural net in isolated places and uh, kind of a, a, a more explainable uh, machine learning models is, the, is the, where the industry will go moving forward. Awesome. Thank you so much.